guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game or card game review for the game Shaka Shredders by Sunslap Studios. Shaka Shredders Rivals plays two players, and it is a collectible card game of sorts with magnetic technology. Now, on the back here, it says that they got slab, slice, and slate cards, and you're going to be basically sliding these cards together because they're magnetized cards. And right now, I have this in a sleeve because this is a prototype version, but it functions just as well when you're attaching the different slab and slate cards together to form your shredders and you're basically going to be dissing your opponents there's going to be these characters that have their own unique sports and they'll be challenging each other to score this star power in which case if you get to a certain amount you win the game and as you play cards and draw cards you're also going to be switching cards leveling them up and making them more powerful to mess with your opponents and show off your amazing skills not only that but there's discards and discards are basically like action cards that can formulate a little trip up for your opponents when they have their big stars out on the field. Now, of course, you can make and create your deck however you would like with just a very few basic rules to the game and a lot of different changes to this crazy technological intense and unique style of gameplay where you're going to be switching around magnetic cards and formulating your own unique army to begin with and then throughout the game, which provides a ton of replayability, a ton of different combinations, even with just in your own unique deck. The base game here comes with the basic, I think, 40 cards in which you can play as the Tiki Tech Lasers and the Grotto Goons, and you'll be rivaling up against each other. I'd be interested in checking out the Kickstarter campaign to see what all the different things you get in this game, but let me just show you what I have here down below, where I'll also go into how you can play the game and what you can do, and then my review. So here we have Shaka Shredder Rivals by Sunslap Studios. And right now I've got the two decks of 20 cards. And you can play as the Grotto Goons and the Tiki Tech Lasers, or you can even kind of mix and match. And the only rule for this game, as far as putting together a 20 card deck, is none of the top and bottom portions of cards can be duplicated in the deck in any way. So if you have the Slammer character here, no other Slammer in the deck. And if you have a full back front spin or grab you can only have that one slab for the bottom as well now of course this has that unique swap top technology where you can literally take the top of a card and you can take off this portion here and swap it with another card now there are rules as to how you do this but it has a unique twist to the game in which you're going to be basically making your characters that you're fighting with become a little bit stronger as you go throughout the game now, there are three types of characters in this game. You're going to have the tricks, which are these guys here. They function kind of like characters or kind of like minions where you'll be using them to basically outperform your opponents. You're also then going to have assisters. These are cards that will kind of go in the back lineup and they are going to basically attach to your tricks and give them some type of bonus. And then the final one is going to be dissers. And dissers look like these green cards here. They are going to basically have a cost associated with them and and on the cost, it will have this three energize. And if you have three energized cards in your graveyard, you'll be able to put them on the bottom of your deck and utilize this card in some way. It's kind of like an action card for most take that games, in which case it will do something nasty to your opponent. And once you play it, it instantly goes away. Whereas the other ones, the assist and the tricks will stay out and play until they're removed during a performance. As you can see on the cards, there's two important sides to it. You're going to have the left hand side, which will have the star power of the card. It'll have the talent and other kinds of things that you'll be utilizing to determine if you're going to beat your opponents during the game. You're also going to have the level of the cards. There'll be one, twos, and threes, and even fours in the game. And level ones are always going to start when you build your deck on tricks. So tricks are always going to be level one to start the game off. They're not going to be two, three, or four. You're going to have to make them get that way as you push them throughout the game to be able to uh, fight your opponents in this sports game or to, I guess, I guess compete against them. Also, it'll tell you what type of the card they are, whether they're tricks or whether they're assists or disses. It'll tell you the different symbols that will be utilized, especially for when you play disses or when you play a support card. And then it'll tell you uh, what the cards do in the areas here. This is going to be combo effects when you play and you outperform somebody. And then it'll also have what the character has as a basically as a passive, as they say, when it comes into play. As long as it's in play, it'll have that effect whenever it's triggered. And there's certain times when they're triggered. Another interesting thing here 
is you're going to have the characters' names here. And the characters' backstory is going to be on the back of all the cards. And all the cards here are going to have unique little twists to them. So as you go ahead and place them out and switch them, you're going to have all the different characters' names and backstories and all that kind of stuff, which is kind of cool and interesting. Now, the game's pretty simple to start. You choose a first player, maybe the last player who performed in some type of sporting event, and then you're going to go. And usually you're going to draw a card, but when you're the first player, you don't. Then you can go ahead and play a card, and you'll usually play a, a, either a trick or you're going to play an assist to begin. So maybe I'll play this character here. And then after that, you can swap. And there are rules to swapping. Maybe you can swap a card from your hand, or maybe you want to swap a card from the field. Now, in this case, I actually don't have anything I can swap from the field because I have different sports up here. So they got the skateboarders and the surfers. So if I were to have played maybe this guy here and a banana, I could swap if I have a card of the next highest level or the same level in my hand. However, I could also swap if I want any cards in my hand. So I could swap maybe Hera Hoof and Miss, Mrs. Rafari. And so as you can see, I would just take these two guys out and switch them. And they would get unique and new stats throughout the game. Whenever you place out a trick, it can't do anything until the next turn. So just like Magic the Gathering, how it has summoning sickness, the card can't attack or perform when it begins in play. But there are unique assisters that will let you do that. Whenever you play an assister, you can also play it in the back row, as long as it's assist, it doesn't matter. Play it out. And basically it can attach to any character it wants and at the end turn it'll re return and these can be attached or removed whenever you so choose and they'll give you a benefit based on the requirements met after that you'll try if you after you swap you can then go ahead and perform you'll basically uh, attack the opponent and if your opponent chooses not to block or can't then that opponent will allow you to gain star power and if you get a certain amount i think it's 20 then you're going to win the game and otherwise, if you do not have 20 points, your turn will end and the next player will get a chance to go. They'll draw a card from the top of their deck. They can then go ahead and play a card, whether it be a, basically a diss, a performer, or a support. And then they'll choose to perform if they can or they'll go ahead and swap if they want. So let's see, for instance, in this case, I have a one skateboarder and this is a two skateboarder. I can actually swap these cards. And it's perfect because this number two, which is basically a level two, I'm leveling this card up, is going to have better stats. As you can see, the star power is higher. And in which case, he's going to be a little stronger throughout the game. Now, after that, I can choose to perform, but I can't. I just played him, so my turn will end, and it's the next player's turn. He'll draw a card, right? And it continues like that. And eventually, I'll play another card, whether it be a support or assist here, and then I'm going to attack. Now, when I attack, I can go ahead and choose to perform. I can then choose to attach cards, and hopefully the matches will work. So in this case, all my dissers are going to get plus one to this stat. And then this character can choose to block, and you're always blocking one-on-one. -on -one. And you're going to block based on this number here. Whoever has the highest is going to win. If there's a tie, it'll come down to this bottom number here. And if not, if there's still a tie, nothing will happen. If you're able to basically diss your opponent or humiliate them, they'll go into the discard pile. And if they still choose not to block, you'll just gain the amount of star power equal to the number up here. And the game keeps going. And you're gonna be able to use these guys back and forth. You'll be using, cards will be in your discard pile. And you'll be using those cards to play dissers. Like in this case here, it says I need two of those Tiki helmets. So do I have two of them? No, I have one, but if this is my discard pile as well, I could then go ahead and discard this one or remove this one and this one from my discard pile. I go ahead and put them on the bottom of my deck. Then I could play a disser as opposed to my support or as opposed to my trick card and do what it says. It can exhaust target a sister with less of uh, this specific uh, stat and then put up to two assisters for my hand into play. And in this case, he has three. So if this was a two, I could do it, but in this case I couldn't. But yeah, so you're gonna be able to use these special abilities and whatnot. Not. And of course, something really interesting, this deck here, they each have a four on them. And these are very, very powerful creatures. They're very, very good at what they do. And they have a ton of huge stats and unique aspects to them. And if you can get them out, you're almost guaranteed to dominate, provided your opponent doesn't come up with some unique strategy in order to beat you in the game Shaka Shredders. I know a lot to talk about, but let's go up and have my review. Are you ready to play some Shaka Shredders, where you're basically going to be out surfing or skateboarding your opponents? This plays a a little bit like Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh or those type of card games, but it's very unique in the sense that it has mechanical cards that can swap back and forth with each other. You will be doing that quite a bit in the game and it's very important and it's it's, it's relevant to your strategy as to how you want to level up your dissers, uh, or sorry, level 
up your tricks. Because tricks are the main things in the game that are going to be doing those star powers, the ability to gather that energy. And you'll be going back and forth, utilizing unique and interesting combinations of cards. Being able to make your own deck is nice. And I can start to see, just with my own cards I have here, how you can manipulate the decks in order to create something unique and very, very useful. Now, of course, it's a one, two, three, four level card, okay? So it's gonna get one of those guys there. And obviously you wanna have a certain amount of each type, four being the highest and hardest to level up because it'll take a while to get there. But when they're out, they're very powerful. Now, this reminds me back in the day when I played Yu-Gi-Oh! and I got my first Seto Kaiba and Yu-Gi-Oh! starter decks and how I had that black magician as well as that blue eyes white dragon card. And they were very powerful and hard to deal with. The same is said for this starter set. When you get those level fours out, they're nearly impossible to beat. Now they're not nearly impossible, but they're challenging to beat because you're going to need to switch things around and utilize your supports as well as maybe a level three of yours to get out something like a disser to remove that card and it can still come back into play because eventually cards are going to be recycled you're never going to run out of cards really because your dissers kind of re-add re cards into from your bottom into the deck so you're kind of always refreshing utilizing your attack cards or take that cards which is really unique and interesting i like that because it doesn't let you use them early in the game you have to earn them by actually making sure certain monsters go from the field into the graveyard. And you might not want them to go into the graveyard, but they might help because then you can get that disser that's going to satisfy a condition that you need to meet in order to beat that level four, level three Shaka Shredder. I also like the technology involved with how they're called the slates and all these like crazy technology that I'm learning as I'm playing this game and the characters as well. Actually, when I take them out, looking at the character cards, reading them, I can see how this is going to be really fun for kids. I personally think this is going to be really, really enjoyable game. Now, like I said, my only main critique is obviously because it's a starter deck, it does feel like a starter deck. It feels like you've got some really good cards, you've got some mediocre cards, and then you've got some ones that are like, I don't know if I want to play this or not, but it's something I need to play in order to get up to that really powerful card. And the fact that you can level them up as they're in play, and it doesn't matter regardless what they're what is in play, as long as you match a certain type of sport. And I can see how this game can transform into more and more different types of sports, and how you can kind of combine and create unique and new and interesting combos as you're playing the game. I had a lot of fun with this one. It also feels good when you have the cards in your hand. Now, I have obviously have a prototype, and so these are actually going to be a little uh, stronger magnets, so you're not actually going to need to have these, these little uh, card holders here, which is good, but it feels good to spread these out. So you'll be able to hold these in your hand. You don't need to actually worry too much about them like slipping and falling when you're holding them. You can simply, I think I can get away with doing that, but yeah. So you'll be able to see that, put them together, close them up. When you shuffle, it feels fun. But I really enjoyed that feel of the game. I thought it might be com convoluted or like feel weird, but I actually really like that. And I like how the decks all stick together too. I think that's, it was kind of interesting at first. I didn't know how it was going to function. I'm really curious to see how this is going to be done fully after it's done, uh, after it's pr been published or been, been manufactured. I'd really like to get my hands on a set of these guys, as well as being able to make my own unique decks. Because like I said, with the starter deck, there's only so much I want to do with it. I want to make sure that each deck has a level four because it only comes with one level four in each deck. So you want to make sure that each deck is, is viable and fair. You could still switch them around and whatnot, but you want to make sure that it's going to be fun for your opponents to play against you. You don't want a blue eyes, white dragon and the dark magician in one starter deck and the other guy he might get a dark hole not very fun not very fun <laughs> but nevertheless i love the artwork i love the style it's gonna be a great little kids game with magnets it utilizes the cool aspect of technology and something fun and scientific and unique that i haven't seen before Little Things is obviously luck, obviously has a style that most of you have probably seen before when it comes to Magic the Other and all that kind of stuff, and of course the fact that there are certain cards that are better than others, which you're not going to have a large plethora of when you're playing just the basic starter deck. So if you want, and you can, check out the link down below, take a look and see what they have there, and if they have more stuff than just the basic starter set, or just the basic two different cards, maybe if they have a couple extra unique things or packs or whatnot, I definitely suggest getting those two and putting them together so that you can make your own unique deck style and play this game. Really had a lot of fun with this one. Excited to see what they finally come out and hopefully I'll get a production copy so I can come back and show you what it looks like on the after the campaign video. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Outro time. Thank you for watching another unfiltered game or board game slash card game review for the game Shock of Shredder's Rivals. If you want to check this game out, like I said, link below in the description where you can pick up the game. It feels really cool. It's got the cool back. I didn't show you that before. As well as, of course, it's got all the unique little information on both of these guys and they tell you how they attach to each other too. So what the starting specific, how they're supposed to start with, right? 
right, it'll tell you. So in this case, it's got Shanka's signature disc. And I'll look and say, oh, this is Lob Fitty. So technically, they're not supposed to go to ch each other, go together. I could if I wanted to, because I'm making my own unique deck. But if I wanted to make them go back to their base state or their original form, I can do that as well, which is really cool. I like that. It's very innovative. Also, check out unfiltergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're going to have this full site update in the next week or so, and you'll be able to see a ton of new content, blog posts, a ton of the new games that you're going to like, just like this one here. It's going to be available for you to take a look at and check out in our related blog posts, as well as our big fancy giveaway and our Discord that you'll be able to join if you're interested in. Join the Discord, see what we're going to be doing on our live streams, our new games, and updates for Moonshell and Mermaid game, as well as Kelly's Corner videos. And don't forget to join us on our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. You can see us play games just like this one down below. In fact, you're going to see us play two new games tomorrow. One is going to be Vinyl and the other one is going to be Boss Battle, both of them on Kickstarter, along with this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to... Wait, wait! Subscribe! Subscribe! Push the button and the notification button, both of them, right now. Are you doing it? Do it. Okay, is it done? We'll end the video now. All right, thank you for watching, and as always, I look forward to shredding out some shakas in this sports, fantastical, unique, mechanical, magnetic, magnetic card game. Oh.